What are the main reasons why a lot of international students get their Canadian study permit refused? What are the mistakes that a lot of people have made so that if you are thinking of coming to Canada as a student that you should not be making to make sure that you can realize your Canadian dreams. If you really want to know that, watch this complete video with us on everything about Canada. Check, check, Johnny Hans. Check, check, this is Johnny Hunts and in today's video, well, we're going to talk about what are the key reasons why a lot of international students get their student visa refused. Well, if you're watching this video in any part of the world, I'm one thing for sure that you have Canada on your mind and if you have Canada on your mind if you're looking forward to come as a student you can come in uh, any DLI approved like uh, approved university or college in any part of the, uh, uh, of the country whether you come on the west coast in British Columbia Vancouver Surrey wherever you want to study or you want to choose colleges from the uh, you know cities on the eastern coast which is definitely you know Montreal or Toronto uh, there are a lot of opportunities in other uh, cities and uh, you know the provinces as well but in particular today we're going to talk about the process of uh, applying for student visa like what are the key uh, you know mistakes that a lot of international students make because of which they get their uh, st uh, study permit or student visa refused the first reason is wrong choice of program so that means the program has to be relevant in whichever part of the world that you're studying so if you're coming uh, as a student uh, you know if you're choosing any program which is more than 900 hours or if we talk about around more than eight months or you know for a year program then you definitely need a study visa or study permit for that and in that case uh, you know definitely you have to make sure that when your file goes to a visa officer to give you visa it has to have a proper plan that means uh, the program that you're choosing has to be relevant with what you have done before that means that if you're choosing for example advanced IT program and you have never even done an IT uh, program before uh, in your home country then obviously it becomes a huge question that how will you be able to understand or take it further after coming to Canada because for a visa officer it's extremely important to make sure to understand that you are a bona fide student to make sure you are a genuine student and not just looking to come to Canada uh, for your own purposes uh, on the name of studies so that is the reason why you need to choose a relevant program now second aspect why a lot of uh, people get their uh, study visa refused is definitely st statement of purpose that is SOP so SOP is really an important uh, statement of purpose which states like why you want the visa officer to give you visa irrespective of the fact like you might have hired an agent to do everything free from your side but statement of purpose goes from a student size it's an honest student story which says to a visa officer who's going to analyze your file in just maybe 10 to 20 minutes right whether he should be giving you the visa or not so he would say like what is your statement of purpose why exactly are you coming to Canada why are you choosing Canada as your destination for study and why particularly you're using uh, you know you're choosing sorry that particular program or college so there has to be a complete story not like I'm not asking you to write a you know a four page essay on it but at least a full page SOP is extremely important to make sure that you clarify what exactly is your purpose why you want to come now if there is any kind of study gap or you have you know you have stopped studying for a few years now you are you know restarting it then you have to explain that well in your statement of purpose why did you stop your study and why you are thinking that you want to start your study further and that too in Canada so there has to be some kind of you know uh, logic which everyone can understand and so is your visa officer and remember they are sitting there to give you visa not to refuse it but you have to give them enough of reasons why they should be uh, even giving you the visa so statement of purpose is other uh, aspect after that the other thing that we have seen is the uh, you know uh, language uh, capabilities or language abilities which is called IELTS so the countries that are non-english speaking that means uh, where their first language is not english are supposed to uh, you know bring uh, they're supposed to have uh, some kind of IELTS score that means it's like a english language testing system which all of you or most of you would know if you're looking to study or work in canada you need that so if they're saying in sds category you need six uh, band in each module in non-sds it can work without 
uh, you know having six modules in each uh, you know in each uh, of the different uh, you know if you talk about modules I mean to say right so you need to have at least six band in each module and then you will have your file in SDS if you pay a fee of one year and in other case if you don't have uh, you know six band in each module you go in and non SDS category still giving a good score is always a plus yes there are chances that people have got visas without even IELTS score and immigration has also mentioned we need IELTS score only in case of SDS category but you know what there are tons of people tons of examples that we have come across where actually the visa uh, officer has refused it just saying like you don't have uh, you know required or appropriate language abilities so it's important for you to have at least you know really good English score if you're thinking of studying the higher the program or you know bigger the level of program better the language score has to be obviously if you're looking uh, looking to do MBA then at least you should have seven in each band but if you're looking for a technical course like you know plumbing or computing support then at least least in each module you need to have 5.5 and with that you'll be able to get visa now uh, the other uh, aspect that we have seen that a lot of people are uh, making a mistake is misrepresentation yes obviously these visa officers are going through applications day in day out guys like their job is to make sure they find out if there are any flaws and they make you to sign or fill information in so many so many forms they're gonna ask you about you about your family what you have studied Studied, when you have studied when you have finished which school which college proof of this proof of that so if you're thinking that you will uh, you know give, falsify uh, something or if you would give some wrong information then think twice before it because giving genuine and honest information you have stronger chances but if you give some wrong information if you get caught by the visa officer and if, the, if there is a red flag then obviously it can lead to misrepresentation and this is seen really uh, in a bad way in uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, immigration in any type of immigration in fact in any country if you apply for so try to you know formulate or bring, bring forward the strong points without misrepresenting but if you are smart enough or you know what to represent and what not what to mention what to not then it's a different story but try to stay as honest as clear as possible when you're filing for your student visa so as recently we have seen that minister of uh, immigration and citizenship here in canada honorable marco mendicino has already mentioned that they are looking to fast track the student application process because a lot of universities and colleges have suffered losses because a lot of students from different countries could not come in so please be ready if you are looking to uh, study in canada if you are looking to take admission in any university or college our team can try to help you in that case that means we can help you to find the right program and relevant program and if you're looking to study and if you have a valid valid IELTS score which you know is right to get a program feel free to fill the form in the in the link given in the description or you can send us an email apply at checkcheckservices.com we will try to find the right program or the college or university for you and overall how do you find our videos if you want us uh, you know to cover any specific topics feel free to leave suggestions let's form a community on this channel because although we have another channel which is called check check jolly hunts which is uh, you know punjabi and hindi channel on which we share uh, you know vlogs poetry and rap but we will try to bring honest and consistent content in english on this channel so that people who cannot understand hindi or punjabi can watch this channel so if you haven't subscribed to this youtube channel please make sure you subscribe this youtube channel and hit bell button so that we can bring more and better content on this particular platform right for you on that note this is me johnny hans signing off for the day you keep enjoying and keep making things happen thank you